That's some cool artwork too. That's a, that's a, one of John's pieces. Yeah. The uh, the pillars on the wall. Oh yes, those are so cool. No, I love those, and they're actually a good example of uh, the sort of opalescent appearance. If yes. I get the right angles on it, they are. It it gives it. It does. It's got such a different feel when you're inside the game. Now, uh, still shots don't usually do it justice because they don't show how the colors change when you rotate around. Mm, yeah. But this room that we're in now is actually this external facility, the Terra. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, there's the sh there's the spark. Yeah, don't don't uh eek, don't get shocked again. <laughs> no. That's uh that's not exactly a good thing. Let's see if we can scan these. We've got a uh, pressure control unit here and a ah. uh, failed one there. Another failed one? Yeah. Yep. Mm. It's a good one. It has a. It has nice... the, lit, the light. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, long term, we're actually looking at uh, making this so you, a lot of the physical repairs we do in game, you're actually uh, manually picking objects up and uh, putting them into place and whatnot. Mm -hmm. With this, we wanted to do something a bit different, and we do the same a few other places. We're actually going to be making this too heavy to pick up on its own and uh, requiring that you use our half lift, uh, sort of a miniature forklift to come in and scoop it up. Right. I know that's been being... Um all worked on and tweaked and everything. Uh, we actually we fixed the uh, biggest issue with the half lift physics last night. It is behaving so ah, much better. Awesome. Very cool. Now, our weld plates, uh, they need to not touch each other because <laughs> uh, they actually, uh, the chemicals in them activate based on a uh, connection to uh, other oxidized material, which includes part other of their own makeup. Plates. Yeah. But used properly, they can patch holes. Very convenient. But again, you don't want them touching all sorts of random stuff. No, but uh, that's one of the things we can put into our toolbox, and it has little dividers to keep them separated enough that they're not going to meld. Ah, that's cool. That's a nice little touch. Let's see. I'm not sure if empty chamber one is loaded here. Crazy. We actually have uh, a so the main hive facility. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, we actually have the two uh, exterior facilities, the Oxygen Garden and the Terra. Right. Within the hive, it, we uh, one of the rooms actually rotates on a track uh, to allow the uh, little tram to take you out to either remote facility. Ah. And I actually did the coding for that one, and I opened the long le wrong level if I was actually going to show that to you. Mm. What a crazy shot. All those walkways and everything shows you all the levels and craziness. Let's see. The level strings. Chamber one. Okay, this is not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Andy Chamber, that little thing right there. Isn't well, that's nice? the tram that uh, will take <laughs> you out to the remote facilities. Like, that's all you're getting. I ain't showing you anything This is else. an older version. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I opened Antichamber 2 instead of Antichamber 1. What am I doing? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one I actually worked on is in... Uh, it's on my older computer. I actually had a computer uh, die midway through the project. Oh, no. 
uh, just for the still able to HCL. retrieve data because we're actually using a cloud-based storage to share data with one another. Yeah, Joseph says AC1. Uh, I know. I just kept opening the wrong version. Mm. Ah, here we go. Oh, look at that. Let's see. This might not have power to it. Mm. Uh, that's the problem with jumping in anywhere into a level. And that's why, like, in the maintenance room, I specifically had a block of code set up as a workaround to the prior puzzles that had to be completed for that one to be doable. Yeah. Gotcha. Let's see. Ah. Uh... What else would be good to show? I imagine people following along have seen a lot of uh, the hub because that's where our initial demo uh, tends to take place. Right. Probably haven't seen it lit up with all the little uh, markers for sounds and decals. <laughs> no, they haven't. They haven't seen seen that before. No. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I think collision might be turned off on the glass here. Uh, I don't actually have the most up-to-date version because the demo being playtested the other day uh, did not have that issue. Mm. So is there anything particular you would like to see or uh, have me show you or talk about? Um, there's nothing I, unless you have something in particular that you, uh, you haven't shown off that you want to show off. Cause I do want to, um, I do want to get a chance and, uh, do a little one-on-one -on -one interview with you so people yeah. can learn more about you and everything like that as mm -hmm. well. So. Well, those are a lot of the sections that I've done large amounts of kismet work in. Mm -hmm. There have been various uh, ones where I was just doing a bit of cleanup or uh, uh, like just applying uh, physical material sounds so mm -hmm. objects uh, actually play a sound when they're thrown into a wall or dropped on the floor. Right. I actually recorded a number of the sounds uh, here at home. Uh, just uh, got out a toolbox and had different clanks and drops and whatnot. Nice. That's pretty cool. But yeah, unless unless you're you're happy with everything that you've shown and we can we can I go think so. on. All right. Let's do it. I mean, I have a couple samples of older work I've done, but if we're going to talk about my education, then I felt that might be the better place to bring those up. Oh, that's true. So, so let's do that then. Let's talk about now, um, education wise, I know you've had, um, a, you know, you got something going on at, uh, at college right now, you're, you're teaching a class. So, so tell us yes. where you started, how you started, how you got into it. Give us the goods. Tell us the <laughs> well, info. Uh, uh, first video game I can ever remember playing was actually on an uh, old Atari system uh, made in like the 1980s. Mm -hmm. uh, the game was called Adventure. You would oh, uh, Your character God, was just a little square a, on the screen. That's you such would a good run around game. and slay dragons trying to retrieve the enchanted chalice. You know they, um, they sell shirts for that now. When You know how when the dragon would eat you, would, you'd turn into like a little ball in their stomach? Yes. They uh, well, sell the shirts with the dragons with the full stomachs now. <laughs> I wanted one well, so bad. <laughs> I actually checked online before our interview today. Uh, it's available for play online. Oh! So like, <laughs> yeah, oh, no. that was your player character, the little square there. I actually have this oh. on my iPad, so... And here's your sword, the arrow, uh, the little arrow. Mm -hmm. I know I'm supposed to view it the other direction. Well, that is the 
quickest I've ever killed the red dragon. The bat just drug him through the sword for me. So I guess, yeah, I mean, that's that's how elite you are. But yeah, I have this on my uh, iPad, which is so funny because I have like the whole Atari thing on my iPad. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, and that happens. But, yep. But no, uh, so a nice wave of nostalgia there. <laughs> But uh, so that was the first video game I I can ever remember playing. Do you know uh, the Do you know about the secret room in this game? Not sure. Uh, wasn't it uh, to do with the catacombs? Uh, it had to do with the catacombs. It had to do with the catacombs. Oh no! I think you pick up like a tiny pixel, and uh, like you can cut through a uh, wall or something like that. I haven't seen it done in a while. Well, I know there's the bridge that you can cross walls. So, uh, I know this was one of the first games that was supposed to have had uh, any Easter eggs sort of introduced mm -hmm. the concept. Yeah, it's, it's de a definite Easter egg. It was the uh, creator's name, wasn't it? Um, it's visible in there. I forget. It's been a while. I know there's, I know like you have to grab like a single little pixel and... The surreal thing, when I first found this uh, about an hour ago, well, two hours ago. Yes, yeah, the uh, creator's Apparently, name. I still remember the way through the maze. Oh, my God. You've done this Played enough it times. too much as a yeah, kid, and now, you know, oh, and, oh. Uh, and now I have been eaten. Yep. That <laughs> dragon was like, nope, you are not getting anywhere. It is the creator's name. Uh, that dragon was not having that. <laughs> Oh, man. But, no, uh, so that got me uh, involved in video games to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as um, interest in making video games, though, I actually really have Blizzard to thank for that. Uh, when I first got Warcraft 2, uh, 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 it included the level editor. And uh -huh. between uh, Warcraft 2, II, Warcraft 3, and the StarCraft series, I've actually probably spent more time in the level editors than I have playing the game. Love the games, but uh, love level that they actually did yeah. the construction kits. Level editing is awesome, though. Uh, so uh, as far as uh, basic trigger logic and uh, environment building, that's what got me my start there. And then with uh, Morrowind, uh, that gave me an introduction to uh, uh, actually starting some scripting. Oh, okay. So from there, I uh, once I was... Uh, ready for college, decided to... I initially went to Wichita State here in Kansas. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't really have a video game design program, though, so I sort of cobbled my own together. Okay. I took uh, all the programming classes they had available through the engineering department, which I think might have been broken off into computer science now. Oh. Maybe it was the other way around. Uh, but uh, my main degree was on the art side uh, the, to get a few classes in Maya, as well as just general artistic skills. Right. Um, since I've graduated there, uh, I couldn't really find jobs in the industry, not locally anyway, and everything I could find further away was like, well, we want you to have had at least so many years of experience. Mm. So that wasn't really working out great, but uh, in the meantime, I managed to find some uh, tech support jobs for Cisco and NetApp, and that worked well to play the bills, but it wasn't really what I was passionate about. Yeah. So uh, just a couple years ago, uh, the another college, Bethany, uh, had I found through my grandmother. Actually, she pointed it out to me that they had opened up a video game design curriculum ah. at their uh, satellite branch, Mindfire, and so I've been going there, and that's been wonderful. And it was actually the director at Mindfire who uh, uh, I guess was approached by Cracker Jack, and he directed them to me, and it's worked out really well. Nice. Now you what um, you're teaching a class at Mindfire now, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, after finishing up the certificate program, uh, which included various modeling, level design, and scripting classes, uh, and then I'm taking the animation classes, even though they weren't strictly required. How you can have a video game design program that doesn't teach you how to animate your characters, I don't know. But I don't at least know they either. have the classes. I think they're. I mean, to add those in on a bachelor's degree version of the program. Mm. I imagine, yeah. But 
the scripting teacher, uh, after the class that he, that I took from him, uh, he actually got a better job offer and has since uh, moved out of state. Ah. Uh, so the college approached me about uh, teaching the class, and I've been doing that for the last four and a half weeks. How do you think it's going? Are you comfortable doing it? Tell us. Uh, actually, very comfortable doing it. Um, Good. I don't have very many students right now. Uh, I, honestly, the campus as a whole, the satellite branch is pretty small. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have little niche fields for video game design, uh, film animation, uh, yes. sound edit, sound and video editing and effects. That's cool. That's real cool. But uh, there have been there are a few people that I'm teaching, and uh, generally it's going well. I have uh, one student who is doing pretty well. Pretty That's well. It. Quote, unquote. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out another way of presenting the information uh, that he'll absorb better. Ah, gotcha. That, you know what, that can be a real, a real uh, obstacle as far as teaching, especially with what you're teaching, because some people learn differently. What's generally worked well, uh, actually for everyone involved, has been a more hands-on approach. Mm -hmm. When I was taught scripting, it was very much the instructor would show me something and then have me build it. Um, I'm actually having uh, uh, my students drive the computer for me and uh, just uh, going with a more Socratic method, asking leading questions mm -hmm. so that they can arrive at the conclusions themselves. Gotcha. Hopefully that works. I mean, it stinks when somebody doesn't understand it. Like, it's not that they don't have the capacity to. It just has to be presented in a different way. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So let's let's play a little 20 questions. Let's get some more info out right. of you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, um, uh... So, a quick thing, uh, mm -hmm. I have to sh a couple things to show as Ooh, far as uh, I have uh, one of my first animation assignments here, if this will come across the video feed all right. Oh, you yeah, can still see my screen. Oh, yeah. So uh, one of the first uh, animation classes I was taking, uh, we just did a short animation. This character isn't uh, doesn't even actually have a skeleton. They're animated part by part. But, uh mm. Pretty cool. Like when when you used to think of computer animation, like this is the type of stuff you thought of. Uh, yeah, uh, my animation is much better now, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of the projects I've worked on are, I don't know, a little more proprietary. So. Mm -hmm. Got you. Uh, but I actually, while at Wichita State, uh, they hired me on to do a mural in one of the rooms in their Nyer lab. Um, oh. uh, and the plane in the mural, uh, sadly the hallway it's painted in, I didn't have a wide angle lens on my camera, so all the photos are kind of from the end. From a bit That's of an cool. angle. It doesn't really, it makes the plane look more squished than it is due to the foreshortening. Yeah, no, I understand that. I mean, listen, if you can't get a good angle, you can't get a good angle. So you did the whole plane? Uh, I did the whole mural. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Uh, the plane, it is actually still a kind of weird looking plane. It's uh, the Nyer lab there on campus was actually building uh, pieces for one of the composite aircraft for Cessna, I believe. Oh. Uh, and it had a sort of dip in the neck area of the plane. It almost that's... looks like a whale. Like they took a design from like a whale or a porpoise or something. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, they're very aerodynamic though. <laughs> But uh, this is the Wichita skyline, uh, mm. Century 2 Exploration Place, the Keeper of the Plains, nice. Epic Center. There'll be recognizable buildings to anyone who lives here. But That's really cool, though. Very cool. But, uh, so, uh, 20 questions away. All right, so, let's see here. So we talked about the first game you remember playing was adventure um and you said that's how you you got started with developing games well um, developing was more warcraft well yeah but you know adventure was your first foray yep. into gaming as a general um if you weren't a game developer what would you be 
I ideally or realistically? You can give both answers. <laughs> uh, realistically, right now, with my current skill set uh, and the jobs in the area, I probably would still be back in tech support and I would be tearing my hair out. Uh, not that it's a bad job, but I find it boring in comparison. I understand where that's coming from. Uh, my ideal job would be uh, uh, more along the lines of, uh, uh, not a remotely realistic job either, but the uh, Huntresses in Ruby. Oh, gee. I think that would be a fun job. There you go. It's, I just want to kill people. That's all I want my job no, no, to no, be. No, 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 no. You fight monsters and protect people. Well, you know, maybe there's maybe there's some, some friendly fire, quote unquote. <laughs> no, hopefully not. Oh, man. Um, now, Under Earth is the only game you've worked on so far since they got you coming right out of college, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. there is a, another company here in town that is looking at hiring me on for some contract work, but I've, and I've agreed to it, but also told them that I'm not actually available until Under Earth is finished, uh, not this close mm -hmm. to release. I need to dedicate my time here to make sure Under Earth is as good as possible. Nice. Now, when you're working on a portion of the game or, um, you know, trying to build something or fi figure something out, do you find yourself taking, um, you know, inspiration from, from like, say, trees or flowers? Have you ever, like, found inspiration in, like, an unlikely spot that when you've been working on something or designing a, a certain something, like the thought just pops into your head and it's like, oh my God, yeah, I can, you know, let me do something more along the lines of that. Ever, ever have like one of those moments? Sort of. It's hard to put my finger on a specific one because mm -hmm. I'm drawing inspiration from anything and everything. Right. Uh, in the scripting, probably not so much. Uh, a lot of the scripting I do it just boils down to a series of if, then, else uh, right. statements. It's like, if this, then that. If if not that, then this. Uh, and I don't know. I, that's something that I've never found complicated, per se. Uh, gotcha. That's always come easily. But uh, in my art, definitely. Um, mm. uh, the mural here was taken more from... Uh, I took a, had a number of photographs of the skyline that mm -hmm. I then sort of compressed and stylized. Gotcha. It's like uh, most of these buildings are spread out more than you would see here, but uh, ah. to bring um, notable features of the town together into a location uh, so that it trying to just boil down the essence of what one might think of for Wichita. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, let's see here. So, what games did you enjoy playing in 2015? 15, 15. Oh, uh, okay, what came out new in 2015? Because... There was a lot. I know 2014 is when I first played Mass Effect, and love it. Um, mm. 2015, I actually spent uh, a lot of that time working, but I'm still on World of Warcraft. Uh, actually, no, StarCraft, hands down. My favorite game of 2015. Mm, okay. StarCraft 2 has been fabulous. Okay. Um, what's your favorite game of all time that you've ever played throughout your entire lifetime of gaming? Got you stumped, don't I? <laughs> if I have to pick one, it's probably a close tie between the Mass Effect trilogy and Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Oh, that's a good one. They're both story-driven, and mm. that's actually my favorite aspect of games. They are uh, they're like books that you get to personally fight your way through. Yeah, that's true. Vampire the Masquerade's good. That game uh, didn't get I like hype. Redemption and Bloodlines both, but uh, I just love that you actually had the medieval half of the setting in Redemption. Mm, yeah. Um, let's see here. 
what is the favorite what is your favorite moment that you've ever had in a video game like something that's like impacted the way you think about something or like made you cry or you were like oh my god type thing Another stumping question. Well, I know it's I'm a hard gonna one. go with uh, 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 Shepard's Tango with Garrus in Mass Effect Three. Oh. I just loved that. Okay. All righty. Um, now, here's an interesting question, and I've gotten a lot of answers to this question. This is a question I like to ask people just to see, um, you know, where your take on everything is going. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you think the gaming industry will be in the next five to ten years? See, we're getting uh, so much more advanced with uh, VR technology and mm -hmm. uh, more and more realistic graphics. Um I think the VR is pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the idea of having a headset strapped on and being able to just look around is awesome. So I imagine the way we handle interface devices will keep progressing more and more that way. Okay. Uh, at least that'd be pretty cool. Um, but as far as the graphics, I, I mean, story-wise, I think people will still like uh, the different kinds of stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Puzzles, mysteries, adventures, uh, different people will like different game types. So I think they'll all still be present. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's nothing new under the sun, but at least in different combinations and characters. But as far as the art style, I suspect that uh, more and more, as we have the capacity for more and more photorealistic styles, I suspect we'll see what we did with art. Uh, is that when uh, photography was first mm. introduced is when artists jumped, basically uh, jumped away from photorealism for a while yeah. uh, and went to uh, the more stylized and uh, cubist and impressionist approach. Yeah, it makes it stand out more. It's not, you know. It stands because you can capture reality. Yeah. So that no longer becomes the end all now, and be all of yeah, it. Yeah, now you want the fantastic. You want the more stylized approach. And in some ways, I suppose someday graphics might end up being perfectly photorealistic. And mm. whether I would enjoy that or not is debatable. I don't actually want to feel like I shot a real person. I think that would be creepy and unsettling. I, I would be... I don't know. Like, I play a lot of horror games. Like, horror is one of my things. And to... I don't know, the realism stuff, they, they're they going to have to start coming with, like, heart attack warnings and stuff like that. Especially yeah. if you're doing it in VR. Ooh, man. Ooh. I hadn't thought about the horror games in VR. I'm yeah, not sure the, I'd enjoy that. the horror that. games right now in VR are rough. Never mind, could you imagine with the improving of graphics and things like that? Holy. But some things... I'm trying to come up with a good example... Some games in the past that uh, went with a more deliberately stylized approach, mm. um, the graphics hold up better than if yes. they'd just done the best the graphics were capable of. Yeah, I agree with you. Because it, it gives it its own art form. It's like you're expecting it to look like that. So that's what it looks like. Instead of like when they used to do try to do the photorealistic back in the day, and you look at that stuff now and it's like, ooh... Mm -mm. no way it's just so dated and blocky whereas if it was already stylized like that like and that's the artwork in the game mm -hmm. it it's fine because you're not putting you're not needing to put it up against anything that's the artwork for the game yeah. uh one i'm replaying now uh, is a uh, draken order of the flame love the oh, game okay um it was uh one of the early uh 3D adventure games. Uh, I think Tomb Raider came out before it did. Uh, yes, but, Tomb Raider came out slightly before it did. But it's a similar game style, only mm -hmm. medieval setting with a dragon. Right. Uh, but uh, that's one example of different ways of stylizing what you're able to do with can actually end up having a better effect than other things. So the sequel for the PlayStation 2... Uh, 
they had better graphics capability and mm -hmm. they took advantage of that with the models and it, it may have been a limitation of the PlayStation at the time but the textures weren't nearly as immersive as they were in the first game mm. and the models may be blockier in game one but uh, I actually feel that it has a better overall appearance because of the time and care taken uh, when people were painting everything. Nice. That's a, those were good games. I do have to agree with you, though. Those, uh, they, uh, whatchamacallit, they did do a little something funky with the second one. Yeah, and I've always wondered if that was just a limitation of the PlayStation at the time. I still really liked the second one, but it was like they almost ignored the plot of the first game. It was still a fun game and set in the same world with roughly the same characters, but mm -hmm. uh, they never really made reference to past events or carried forward from their goals of game one. Yeah, they didn't. It was still... Uh, a great game as far as fun and uh, good play style I liked. But uh, uh, Order of the Flame is the one that actually holds the special place for me. It is. I mean, that series is good, though. So mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not... Oh, no, I, I definitely recommend playing them if you ever get a chance. I, I'm i not sure how... I don't actually... It's been ages. I don't know if my PlayStation 2 still runs. Oh, jeez. If it doesn't, I, I hope someone's made an emulator or I can <laughs> find one for sale online somewhere. Go to garage sales. Yeah. Make out like a bandit there. Um, so with all that being said, do you have anything else you want to add? Anything... Any personal messages, any words of encouragement for anybody that's just getting started in the field? Um, you know, anything you want to you wanna add in before we head on out? Well, uh, it's the thing. Uh, here in the middle of Kansas, uh, with essentially no video game jobs to be found, uh, initially starting out, it didn't seem very practical that I could pursue this career without... Mm. Uh, just uh, moving away from everyone, um, all my friends and family. Yeah, I didn't but, think uh, about that. With the technological advances, I've actually never met any of my team in person. Uh, we meet strictly over web conferencing, mm -hmm. and but with file sharing systems, it's still perfectly practical. Uh, so, don't let uh, don't let anything deter you if uh, this is what you want to go into. Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, we were from all across the board, and we talk all the time. Get to see each other via camera and things like that. So it's not like we're strangers. Yeah, it's... the biggest problem half the time can be finding a place to learn uh, the different tools. Mm, that's but, true. But uh, there are getting to be better and better online tutorials for that as well. Mm. That's some that's some good uh, good information there because I'm sure a lot of people do get frustrated um either if they can't can't find a school or don't know where to go or just feel like there's not going to be any jobs those you've made some very good points about how technology is changing changing the game mm -hmm. on employment and everything well, like that so the uh the scripting class that i'm teaching mm -hmm. um I actually had a bit of a wrestle in the early stages planning my lessons, trying to figure out what I could actually bring to the table that they couldn't just find in an online tutorial because there are fabulous tutorials at this point. Mm, yeah. And a lot of it just comes down to the uh, personal experience and being able to ask me questions if uh, something wasn't perfect, wasn't clear enough to begin with. Yeah, and you know what, that's another good point. Never be afraid to ask questions. There's people out there that'll help you. So oh, definitely. If and uh, if anyone has questions for me, I'm all ears. Let me see here. I don't believe, no, we don't have any um, viewer questions right now. We have Do you Joseph. have any viewers? Yes. <laughs> and we have Joseph spamming robot heads in chat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, all right. Well, with that, we're going to head on out. Um, Kerrigan, I do want to thank you for joining us, giving us some info, giving us your it was a pleasure. point of view, talking about things. We got to know a little bit about you, see what you've done, kind of, you know, kill two birds with one stone type thing. Because, you know, like I said, we, we know 
about John and both Josephs at this point, but like you're one of the ones that are st were still in the shadows before <laughs> this. <laughs> no, and uh, if anyone actually lives around uh, Phoenix, uh, I'll, I'm hoping to go to the uh, launch party there. Yes, there is going to be a launch party for Under Earth on May 19th at UAT, which is the University of Advanced Technology. Um, that's going to be pretty cool. The whole group is going to be there. Um, you'd be able to meet Kerrigan. There's going to be both Joseph's, John, I believe Allison's going to be there. Um, it's going to be a party. It's going to be a good time. So if you're in the Phoenix area, definitely stop by on May 19th. We will be posting more information about that. Um, as it comes up, you know, definite time, all that good stuff. Um, so stay tuned to that. Go check out the Steam page um, for Under Earth. That way you can take a look at all the newest tech updates. Uh, demo is in for review right now, so that will be up very shortly. So if you want to get your hands on Under Earth, you will be able to get your hands on the demo. And then also, we are going to Indicate East at the end of the month. April 30th and May 1st. It's a Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be participating in the show and tell there. Come say hi. Track us down. Where is and that being held? It's going to be a good time. That is at the Museum of the Moving Image in um, New York City. Cool. So it's going to be a good time. Again, Kerrigan, thank you very much. Um, it was a pleasure. For joining us. Let me just wait for your camera to pop back up on oh. screen. Oh, sorry. Oh, you cut it off? It's okay. <laughs> oh, well, I, I cut off my screen share, but I should still be sharing my webcam. Yeah, it's, Skype's being slow. Oh. It's been, it's been being funky again. It's all right, though. But we're going we're gonna to head on out. Again, Kerrigan, thank you very much um, for joining us. Appreciate it. I hope everybody that is watching this live and then um, also watching it previously recorded... Hope you enjoyed it. We've got a lot more coming. Our last developer to catch up with is Allison. So to stay tuned. We'll be uh, getting up with her and uh, having a chat with her as well. So we will see you all later. Again, thank you very much. Take care. Have a great day. And thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye. Farewell. I'm waving. I don't know if you can still see me. No, it's all right, though. I'll wave for you. That's a wave from Kerrigan. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.